Good afternoon and good evening, everyone. Uh, on behalf of the Wednesdays for Water, an initiative of W for W Foundation, a think tank instituted as a citizens collective, we welcome you to the 89th session of the Wednesdays for Water talk series on sanitation and groundwater, the invisible connection. Wednesdays for Water was instituted in April 2021 with the objective to engage in conversation with water experts, grassroots practitioners, policymakers, and youth to explore the complex intertwined issues associated with water and explore possible solutions. We have expanded since then to have more activities like the Friday Waters and the Monday Munching with Women for water with, besides organizing water workshops, water walk and talks, seminars, special courses and conference panels to continue the water conversation in the various possible ways. And for those of you who have joined us today for the first time, you may please visit our website, www.w4w.in for more details. Uh, given that today we are talking about sanitation, uh, we all are aware that there is a global sanitation crisis. There are 3.6 billion people who are still living with poor quality toilets that ruin their health and pollute their environment. Every day, more than 800 children die from diarrhea linked to unsafe water sanitation and poor hygiene. Inadequate sanitation systems spread human waste into rivers, lakes, and soil, polluting the water resources under your feet. However, this problem seems to be invisible. Invisible because it happens underground. Invisible because it happens in the poorest and the most marginalized communities. Groundwater is our most abundant source of fresh water, and as climate change worsens and populations grow, groundwater is vital for our survival. Safely managed sanitation protects groundwater from human and waste pollution. Today, we are honored to have amongst us Ms. Sharmishta Devnath, Executive Engineer, Survey Investigation and Research Division, and Mr. Shishir Kumar Biswas, Executive Engineer, Urban Water Supply and Sanitation from the Department of Public Health Engineering, Government of Bangladesh, and a young discussant, Mr. Bharat Ramachandran from the Terry School of Advanced Studies. I would first like to invite Ms. Sharmishta Devnath. Sharmishta Devnath, as I said, is working as an Executive Engineer serving Investigation and Research Division, Department of Public Health Engineering, Ministry of Local Government, Rural Development and Cooperatives. As an Executive Engineer of Survey Investigation and Research Division, she leads the activities related to collection of data of municipalities and pre preparation of databases regarding water supply, sanitation, and septage management. She also provides technical support to different urban and rural projects linked with water sanitation and septage management. She's also in charge of the sandbox recently established by DPHE in collaboration with Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So Sharmisha, for you, you know, I have a question, rather a few questions that I would request you to reflect while you are talking and sharing your thoughts on the topic today. The first is about the sanitation situation in Bangladesh. And what are the challenges that you are facing to achieve open defecation? Then you said about, you know, in your CV, you said that you have a collaboration with San Board. So we would really like to know that how is it helping improve sanitation in Bangladesh? And last but not the least about the gender issues around sanitation. So thank you very much, Sharmishta, again for joining us today. And over to you to share your thoughts. Thank you very much, madam. And uh, thank you, W4W Foundation, for the invitation. Uh, I'm really, I feel honored to talk about uh, the sanitation situation of Bangladesh. First of all, I just want to say that it is uh, very fortunate that we, are, we have been declared open defecation free in 2016. But still, it's, uh, we can say it's 97% uh, open defecation free, but 3% is there. So I can say it's a challenge. Um, uh, especially in uh, the slum areas, it's a challenge. But overall, oh, now we are moving towards the SDG goal 6.1 and 6.2 both. Bangladesh government is working with our Honorable Prime Minister. She has been also awarded with the SDG Progress Award in 2021. And all, and uh, and our ministry, Ministry of Local Government, Rural Development and Cooperatives, as you said earlier, we are doing a lot for the for the improved sanitation facilities for people of all walks of life. So now the challenge Bangladesh is facing about the improved sanitation facilities and to achieve the target of SDG 6.1 and 6.2 in 2030. <clears throat> and uh, I, can, I can proudly announce that now we are almost open defecation free 
and I think it's a great achievement for Bangladesh in the, among the Asian countries. We we are we were the first one, and the Nepal and India is also doing very well. We know about especially in the septage management. India is doing really great. And just I want to share about the uh, uh, Sandboard and the uh, collaboration with Gates Foundation. Uh, the, uh, in 2003, there was a sanitation survey in Bangladesh, and after that, there, are, there was not that much database for sanitation facilities and uh, uh, for providing the uh, improvement of sanitation to the people. Then uh, Gates Foundation came in collaboration with DPH, that is uh, Government of Bangladesh, that is that, is that they no, uh, they want to know about what is now the real sanitation situation. And I'm really happy that and glad that the, the, the then project director, Mr. Shishir Kumar Bishash, is also there. There is a project, it is called 61 Towns Feasibility Study Project. It was for 53 municipalities um, and also eight city corporations in Bangladesh. And there is an intensive survey. And um, I would like to thank them because in the COVID period also the survey, uh, they, they were doing the survey, the whole team was working a lot. And after that, the dashboard, they have been prepared. And then it has been, though I'm the, I, uh, in, I was in the charge, now I'm not uh, the, in the position of uh, survey investigation and research division, but I'm as the executive engineer, you know about the system in Bangladesh and India are the same, that we are on deputation when in the highest studies. So um, uh, now a new lady is in charge for the division, but he's uh, have responsibility also about uh, to monitor the dashboard. So we have started and the dashboard has been handed over to the survey investigation and research division of DPH to monitor. But uh, uh, the in this survey, there, there are sheet flow diagrams and also the existing situation of uh, 53 district towns of Bangladesh and eight city corporations. So it, it was really very helpful to understand what is the current scenario the, uh, the district towns has been now doing on. I'm sure that Mr. Shishi Kumar is also there. He was, though he was the project director, so he will highlight more on about but I really want uh, like to thank the Gates Foundation and also the government of Bangladesh because, and also our uh, then chief engineer, they did, uh, the, they took the initiative and they did great on that survey. And now, and you can see, you can go through the website. This is open for all www.sandboard.gov.bd. And you can even see the overall sanitation situation of Bangladesh and different towns. And uh, another question uh, you have made, ma'am, that is, that is about the uh, gender issues in yes it's a, really it's a challenge because you know all over the world women are facing challenge even you can say in netherlands the, the people say that women are facing challenge in different sectors also in water and sanitation sectors so so uh, there's a, you can say that it's a global challenge for the for a developing country like bangladesh india sri lanka pakistan we can say the overall situation is almost same but what the government is doing we are working now with the with the mhn that is menstrual hygiene management recently we uh, we had made the strategy from the local that, that was the initiative of the local government division that is our ministry and uh, i was the uh, member of the core committee of this strategy and the strategy now has been established and uh, and especially for the girls in the school, in the primary schools, before this strategy, Bangladesh was working very well. In the we have a project that is primary education development program, and uh, more in more than thirty four thousand uh, primary schools, uh, there are <clears throat> there are uh, inclusive toilet with menstrual hygiene facilities, and also in the school committees, we have the. Uh, we have the uh, sanitation working group with the teachers and with the students in collaboration with so that um, the both the boys and girls can know about the what what is uh, the men menstrual hygiene management and how it can be managed it, it is not a taboo now that's for me that's from my side thank, thank you. you thank you very much Sharmisha. i think uh, you brought out some great points uh, regarding you know the septage management. I know for sure that Bangladesh is doing amazingly well, you know, in 
literally like all human uh, uh, indicators which are there. So human development indicators which are there. So I completely agree. Uh, maybe at the end of this, uh, Bharat would be reflecting on the India situation. Uh, but sometimes it so happens that we may have systems in place, like you said, you know, the septage management that you, you talked about, uh, which is there in place, or we talk about open defecation free. Uh, but how do we really define this? And what do we really mean exactly when it comes to you know, open defecation free? Is it just building the toilet or is it also ensuring that people use those toilets? Uh, and uh, perhaps a very important point, but at the same time, highlighting some of the gender issues also, wherein, uh, you know, uh, that their women have definitely unique challenges everywhere. Uh, but given that uh, Bangladesh is uh, actually in South Asia showing the way to most of the countries. So thank you very much for your thoughts. And with that, I will now move on to... Mr. Shishir Kumar Biswas. Uh, Mr. Shishir Kumar Biswas is working as an executive engineer, urban water supply and sanitation with the Department of Public Health Engineering, Government of Bangladesh. He has been working in the wash sector from 2008. He has engaged in different research projects with Bangladesh University of Engineering and Technology from eight, uh, 2008 to 2011. And after that was part of implementation of different projects and programs as government officer of Department of Public Health Engineering under Local Government Division, Ministry of Local Government, Rural Development and Cooperatives, Bangladesh. He has an undergraduate and postgraduate degrees in civil engineering from Bangladesh University of Science and Technology. Uh, Mr. Shishir, I would request you to now reflect on three aspects from the myriad of projects that you have done in the wash sector, which perhaps has uh, have a very close interlinkages with the groundwater pollution. Over to you, Mr. Sushil. Thank you very much, uh, Madam. And uh, I'm really grateful to the organizer for this uh, Wednesday for uh, Water of the session 89 uh, today. So uh, before uh, discussing uh, in a lot uh, open discussion, I want to uh, share my presentation with Please you. Please do. Please do. I think you should be able to do that. Huh? Yeah, we can see your slide. If you can go to the slide yes. show. Yeah, perfect. I think. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. So uh, I'm going to explain the impact of uh, sanitation service on groundwater uh, and uh, what we are uh, actually working, thinking and doing uh, for the people of Bangladesh uh, under uh, this Department of Public Health Engineering. So uh, you know very well that this is the uh, our uh, sanitation service chain this capture of human excreta, storing it, uh, withdrawal or transport, then treatment, uh, reuse and uh, disposal. Uh, all of us uh, know is very well that uh, uh, if we uh, consider all of these components, uh, then the value chain will be established and will be strengthening. Uh, then uh, if you consider the safely managed sanitation, pick a sludge properly contained, collected, transported, treated, and disposed, and result of the unsafe sanitation is the uh, contaminate water resources and open spaces first, then contaminate food chain through different media, results in increased diseases and environmental pollution. Uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Shomisha Devnath mentioned uh, uh, about this uh, sandboard and the, our uh, recently completed survey. Uh, uh, in that, uh, all of you will find the results uh, of the situation of the 53 municipalities. All of those are district towns and all. Uh, the eight city corporations, the situation regarding this uh, value chain, uh, what they are actually doing, uh, especially on Pegasus management, their sanitation, uh, and also the municipal solidus management. A special priority has been given to the uh, poor peoples or low income communities and uh, their uh, habit, their behaviors, all of those have been reflected in this uh, uh, survey and uh, you will get it in the sandboard. So uh, we tried our base to uh, incorporate the citywide inclusive sanitation service frameworks and different indicators and co-indicators. Absolutely, the uh, equity, safety, sustainability, those portions uh, have been reflected uh, in uh, different uh, points. And uh, some uh, box uh, were there. So anybody, if wants to go in deep uh, through permutation and combination, just like this, uh, the type of uh, sanitation system or containment system, whether uh, those uh, containment systems are accessible by the 
uh, uh, I mean, trucks, uh, vacuum trucks, or uh, whether uh, three tons of trucks are uh, accessible uh, for uh, collecting this. So all of those things uh, have been reflected in this uh, dashboard. Uh, and uh, uh, with those informations, we are trying our best to uh, prepare the uh, SFG uh, reports. And uh, gradually, we are publishing into the uh, Susanna. Uh, now, uh, we are really, really happy that uh, uh, those are uh, in different universities, different undergrad and uh, master's universities. The students are working uh, with those and giving us different types of solutions for a municipality based, uh, uh, I mean, this situation improvement. And uh, uh, based on those uh, uh, actually uh, reports and uh, the different uh, development partners along with the government of Bangladesh providing the finance for this development projects for uh, uh, scale up this uh, situations, improving the overall situation regarding this waste management. So now uh, the, there is a specific links of groundwater and the sanitation service. You know that on-site sanitation systems are the speed latrines and septic tank when they are badly sited or constructed uh, or maintained. Uh, nitrate concentrations in shallow groundwater commonly exceeded drinking water guidelines uh, in areas with uh, on site sanitation have adverse effects on health. Drinking water supplies after accumulating in groundwater due to pitch and tank leachate in urban setting, household chemicals, solvents may be disposed of through latrines, uh, leading to localized uh, water uh, contamination. Actually, this situation is quite common in the uh, subcontinent and some African regions where uh, we are depending on the decentralized uh, system, on-site sanitation system uh, and decentralized uh, no sewer system uh, where uh, they are. And groundwater contaminate via leachate percolating from pits or septic tanks or leakage from cracked or damaged septic tank. Floating of septic system due to groundwater levels and uh, leakage from sewers into shallow groundwater. Uh, you know that Bangladesh is a really flood prone areas and in uh, rainy season, in the wet season, the groundwater uh, elevate and uh, near about uh, uh, one meter uh, or less than one meter at that time. So, uh, you know, that situation is really, really uh, deteriorate uh, during the wet season. And uh, this rising of groundwater levels uh, in uh, coastal or low lying zones damage the underground uh, uh, infrastructure from the uh, rising under water level. Treatment plants receiving flows with the uh, concentration of pollutants that exceeds their design capacities resulting in lower treatment performance. So I am presenting uh, a picture uh, on the right side. So explaining the uh, what is actually the situation. Uh, if uh, during the dry season or normally, you know that Bangladesh is uh, uh, almost uh, more than 80% depending on the uh, uh, groundwater. Uh, for uh, drinking water purpose and all other uh, water using. Uh, and uh, really, these uh, high groundwater table and uh, this inappropriate, or what I have mentioned already, these uh, uh, mainly the source of pollution or a connection of the uh, this, uh, human excreta or bacteriological contamination of the groundwater in uh, Bangladesh. So uh, in Bangladesh, water for uh, drinking purpose uh, was available in adequate quantity through dark wells, uh, reserve ponds, rivers, and canals. In earlier days, uh, after liberation, these are the main uh, sources of water in Bangladesh. After that, uh, gradually with the assistance of the UN agencies and the country professionals, groundwater found was safe until uh, presence of uh, arsenic and uh, naturally occurring toxic heavy metals uh, was noted uh, in 90s. In urban areas, the agencies responsible for water supply and sanitation based uh, their works on groundwater and surface water resources are not available in sufficient quantity around the year. And uh, quality of uh, available water deteriorated uh, due to this pollution. In coastal belt, increase of salinity uh, in both surface water and groundwater aquifer mainly due to sea level rise. And you know that the climate change, uh, uh, these are really affecting our uh, groundwater uh, aquifer system. And if you consider the uh, half portion, southern portions of uh, Bangladesh, uh, in uh, dry season, more or less the, up to the Foritpur regions or near about Narangos regions, the salinity intrudes in the uh, groundwater aquifer system. So we are facing challenges for this uh, uh, salinity in groundwater. In coastal belt, increase of the salinity, uh, mainly due to this, uh, what I have mentioned, 
and uh, it uh, may be said that uh, confidence of groundwater is the main source of water for water supply sanitation in the country, but uh, 70, uh, in the other hand, 79% of the irrigation, uh, Bangladesh is agricultural based country, uh, which is uh, also based on this groundwater mostly. In right side, uh, there's a, a specific some uh, issues uh, uh, documented in last uh, GMP report, 67%, uh, near about 700 million people uh, are uh, having access to safely managed water in Bangladesh, uh, out of which 67% have access to water that is uh, improved and sufficient on uh, premises. Uh, and uh, meets the standards of arsenic less than uh, 50 ppb. You know that in Bangladesh, the standard of uh, arsenic is the 50 ppb, whereas the WHO standard is 10. Uh, now 43% have access to water that is improved and sufficient on premises, meets the uh, standard of arsenic and is free from uh, fecal contamination. So you know very well that uh, what is happening for the other 57%. Uh, uh, so uh, if you consider this uh, biggest challenge is to uh, achieving safely managed drinking of water, uh, now we are also considering this E. coli, just uh, deteriorating our uh, safely managed water supply system. And uh, yes, without we are now in a position that we are, all of us, the policymakers and the government who are developing these projects and uh, concentrating on these uh, issues, uh, now uh, well known that uh, these uh, bacteriological contamination are uh, uh, the source or the regions of uh, the uh, deteriorating this coverage of the safely managed uh, uh, water supply system throughout the country. Now the uh, sanitation system, uh, it's a chart, the basic sanitation in 2020, we have achieved 54%, at least basic in national, uh, rural 55% and for the urban it is 53%. But uh, if you consider this uh, standard of uh, safely managed sanitation in 2020, the situation is 39%, though uh, it is not uh, in good position, but uh, we are fortunate enough, we are uh, identified, we have identified it uh, very well, and gradually we are in incorporating it in our different policies, strategies, uh, our uh, national development plans, uh, and uh, trying to uh, place it in our higher body so that some, uh, standardization of uh, uh, this matters uh, probably possible with the uh, help of our Department of Environment and some other ministries like uh, Ministry of uh, Agriculture. Uh, so DPH is the national lead agencies for provision of the drinking water supply, sanitation facilities, and waste management in the country, excepting Dhaka, Narangon, Chiragong uh, cities where WASAS actually operates. You know that uh, WASA actually responsible for uh, this uh, water supply system for this mega cities. City corporations now taking lead of the drainage system of those mega cities and waste management, but those are not developed yet. Uh, they are trying their base with the help of some uh, developing partners and our uh, government agencies uh, and have our plan uh, for 2030 so that uh, uh, some good uh, value chain will be established for those mega cities. DPH implements municipality-based development project for piped water supply, drainage networks, improved sanitation, solid waste, fecal sludge management systems. For rural areas, DPH implements projects for a small scale piped water supply scheme, low cost sanitation, as well as hygiene promotion uh, activities. DPH also uh, conducts human resource development and uh, local government institutes uh, strengthening program on uh, water supply, sanitation, and hygiene, and absolutely now, Waste management is another main part of uh, this uh, development activities. DPG implement the projects and uh, programs in line with national policies, strategies, sector development plans, complying with the relevant acts, regulations, and uh, standards. Uh, we are really, really fortunate enough. We have our uh, journey started uh, in 2012. The first uh, fecal last treatment plant we have established in Tuakpur in municipalities, and gradually uh, those have been standardized. And uh, in 2017, we have the uh, uh, prepared this uh, institutional regulatory framework for fecal sludge management. And uh, we have provided the sensitization program for the municipalities and all the uh, local government institution in rural areas and mega cities. And now we have the implementation plan of the fecal sludge management, uh, this IRF, and uh, uh, initiating different types of uh, projects. Now, uh, the monitoring, if you consider this uh, monitoring of the safe groundwater resource, what DPH is actually doing, DPH established, 
records of uh, safe groundwater aquifer layers throughout the country and uh, uh, the changes of water quality, nationwide public water points mapping, union-wise water technology mapping, geoport-based water point identification system, uh, tubal water quality screening system, implementation of uh, water safety framework and plan uh, with the support of the w, uh, WHO, World Health Organization. We are trying, actually. Uh, we have this database and uh, we have our uh, this monitoring systems. Uh, in the uh, mid uh, section, uh, I have uh, shown uh, a board of, uh, we have this mapping and uh, another one, the water uh, point mapping, district level water mapping. Uh, so one can easily get uh, which area uh, will be suitable for which technologies. So uh, here is uh, another example of uh, how we are treating uh, the arsenic contamination. Uh, here the two uh, figure, you can easily uh, differentiate this uh, uh, arsenic concentration for the shallow aquifer and the, for the uh, uh, deeper aquifer, uh, the concentration map. So now uh, we are assuring the uh, rural drinking. Uh, you can say that how DPHE, though various rural development projects installs groundwater-based water points and ensures a geocode ID with detailed information of the water points, selected technology for water extraction from safe aquifer layer, taste of water quality from DPHE zonal laboratory for uh, maintaining drinking water quality standard in Bangladesh, established web and Android-based uh, information platform. Uh, here is a sample of this uh, uh, web-based and Android-based information. From every union label, if any water point installed, the detailed information of those installed uh, water points come to uh, the um, central database uh, in our central server through this mobile application and uh, this community water supply, water source and rural pipeline, all of those source uh, actually uh, incorporated in the central database. And hopefully just like the sandboard, uh, maybe within one or two years, we are going to establish uh, another web platform where uh, everyone will get this information of this, uh, our uh, groundwater database. So uh, with the support of GOB and development partners, now FSM activities uh, we are initiating and now uh, another uh, 100 municipalities, uh, different types of uh, projects are going on these uh, municipalities. Uh, a detailed feasibility study, what uh, I have mentioned by Shormishta, uh, we have incorporated this information and established this uh, sandboard. And innovative toilet technologies uh, are, uh, it's a regular words, uh, piloting programs in rural and hard to reach areas. Uh, you know that biofill uh, is uh, originated from that. And uh, for the uh, Rohingya camps in Cox's Bazar, we have uh, incorporated this technology and found very, very good results. Uh, for camps of forcibly displaced Myanmar national, DPG is going to demonstrate Omniprocessor, the most upgraded technologies, assisted by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and Asian Development Banks. Uh, DPG established CBS FSM cell to plan, design, monitor the activities of the capacity building, awareness campaign, standardization of the service, and uh, implementation of IRF through different projects. Human resource development works is a uh, common uh, through our uh, DPG HRD center and also the ITN Buet, uh, we have established the CB hub and uh, uh, providing this knowledge to the local government institutions, urban and rural based projects under uh, process uh, for implementation of IRF for FSM in Poroshovas and rural areas, some projects are uh, under development. So here is an example of uh, Jinnatu municipalities, what we have incorporated in the sandboard based on the information, here the SFD also the thank you diagram. So anybody, any researcher or the planner easily get the different informations related to this value chain, FSM value chain. And uh, the next chart, uh, the contaminant type versus duals, different types of permutation combination and different types of information can be achieved uh, from these boxes. And now what we are actually uh, going to do with the thinking the establishment of the total sanitation after completion of this dashboard, we are uh, concentrating on the uh, municipality-based integrated uh, municipal information system that is called the IMIS landscape. We have already piloted in Jinnata municipalities and some other uh, three to four municipalities. And in the upcoming, uh, some projects, uh, we have incorporated this uh, 
uh, things so that from the central level, the water sanitation drainage patterns will be incorporated and uh, will be monitored centrally. And uh, in that case, the standardization of those uh, service uh, will be possible. And uh, what I have mentioned, though the uh, safety matter sanitation coverage is not uh, uh, very, very much rich in Bangladesh, but we are trying our best uh, for implementation of this strategies and others. Uh, and uh, we are really hopeful that within a very short time, we'll reach uh, and in a good position for improving this coverage. And we are also concentrating this uh, WHO guidelines, the, this diagram presents the regulatory mechanism through which the states of the sanitation service chain can be regulated. So finally, uh, the globally, you know, uh, that at least 2 billion people use drinking water source contaminated through microbial contamination of drinking water as a result of contamination with feces. Uh, absolutely, the risk is high. Having access to safety managed sanitation and drinking water services with good hygiene facilities and awareness is the foundation of public health. They say that $1 invested in uh, basic sanitation, the returns of the $5 is saved, medical cost and increased productivity of jobs are created along with the entire service chain. And under SDG 6 Global Acceleration Framework, particularly uh, in the areas of governance, capacity building, data, and uh, information, the link between groundwater and sanitation needs to be strengthened uh, through inclusive policy and uh, its uh, coordination implementation. Uh, groundwater and sanitation specialists, policymakers, and uh, practitioners must uh, all increase their cooperation, especially for assurance of the safe and sustainable sanitation services for protection of the groundwater source and uh, supply system. So this is uh, uh, from my side. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Shishir, for this very comprehensive uh, uh, presentation. And especially, you know, trying to highlight the invisible connection between the sanitation and the groundwater. Uh, you know, we often keep talking about decentralized systems, especially when we talk of decentralized systems in the sanitation sector. And if, as you rightly said, you know, the latrine pit or the or the septic tanks, if they are not really constructed right, how the seepage could re could result in the groundwater getting polluted. But at the same time, uh, you know, we need to take the context into consideration, and that's another thing that you brought out that the overflow from these uh, these septic tanks because of excess of rain and these days in fact rains have started becoming more unpredictable so how the overflow finally sort of you know lands up in the groundwater and uh, another thing that you brought out uh, correctly is about the arsenic thing though obviously arsenic is not really directly linked to the sanitation thing but arsenic is definitely a huge problem you know presence of arsenic in the groundwater along the ganges basin and uh, but ironically you know uh, the the who standards are less than 10 but uh, if you're poor if you're from the developing world your your standards are also compromised huh? so so the the standards for us it is like uh, uh, less than 50 huh? So often it so happens, you know, that uh, if your your life is less precious than somebody else's life, huh? uh, that's that's something that you really. But I, I really I, I admire the way the Bangladesh government, the DPH is going through the whole process, you know, and how you are really looking at capturing the data. I would, uh, in due course of uh, the discussion today, I would really love to know also how are you planning to share this data with the people, but. Thank you very much. As of now, I'll hand over to Bharat, who is our young discussant for today. Thank you, Bharat, for joining. Uh, Bharat is pursuing his MTech in Water Resources Engineering and Management from the Terry School of Advanced Studies. He identifies himself as a transdisciplinary student of water with keen interest in environmental justice and sustainability. He's an engineer by training, but loves to explore the social aspects of water sanitation and environment as a whole. So over to you, Bharat, for your thoughts on the presentation and how you know how you think how is india faring you know vis-a-vis -vis bangladesh and maybe you can have some questions for the speakers also huh? so over to you yeah thank you man yeah first of all i'd like to uh, congratulate both sushir kumar sir and uh, the other ma'am to for coming up with a you know to dashboard like sandboard where they will be able to monitor in real time because today as you know like data is the main thing only when we have like real time information of what is happening at the ground level, then policy decisions can be taken such that it reflects the ground level. 
as uh, so so in the presentation india and bangladesh are like more similar countries since both of us are south asian neighbors we share common borders uh, india also like uh, go with where we were to, you are talking about sanitation for a long time it started became like a people movement with the swachh bharat mission which started in the gramin and urban areas and uh, with the progress of swachh bharat mission we were able to build more toilets but again the functionality of toilets whether it's being really used and with as uh, both of you had mentioned the septic tanks and the decentralized project would lead to groundwater pollution if it if the layers are not built correctly if the if the building is not done in a standard manner uh, so uh, i'm uh, uh, shamish sam i have a question uh, to you uh, it is uh, like uh, often how how difficult is it to estimate or how difficult is it to detect pollution in groundwater because when we look generally and we talk in terms of sanitation or sewage they like will be if the sewer overflows we'll be able to see it visually we'll be able to get the stench or we'll be able to detect it immediately but when a septic tank leaks or when some percolation happens so how will be how difficult or how will we know like when the groundwater is getting polluted and take immediate action so that it doesn't cause much of a health impact to others also thank you very much mr bharat it's a very nice question really we are facing problems on that you know in both in india and bangladesh though we have septic tanks we have containment systems but what happens the it is connected to the drains so if there is no rainfall happen also not the flood happen the groundwater is also polluting with the open drains connected with the septic tanks so for the not for the uh, not for the water projects the sanitation projects are also facing problems but we, we are very uh, we will be glad to know that we have municipal act where it has been uh, it is it is in 2009 the municipal act 2009 and it has been restricted that no septic tanks cannot be now in in uh, in the dashboard which district we are covering most of the districts you will see when you will go to the dashboard the septic tanks are lined the twin pits are lined because there are extensive programs by the government of bangladesh uh, uh, after 2003 when we we have been declared open defecation free government is facing uh, the forwarding towards the improved sanitation facilities and lots of uh, awareness campaign and motivational activities have been run through by different different projects uh, by asian development bank by world bank also guest foundation is doing uh, shishir kumar bishash mentioned about the capacity building hub with the inter international training network of bangladesh engineering university and um, this this international training network is a huge now we are working with asian institute of technology with the center of excellence so we are running we are moving forward that is the and uh, you know i i don't know uh, what india is doing about this but we have a very nice campaign cartoon that is called mina mina is from unicef and then with the mina cartoon and also a children when the cartoon is, is been shown in the in the rural level even they uh, almost all people have televisions now in bangladesh and some parts of india also so they can they know about even the women they 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 are they, they are most of them are housewife in rural areas and the children their school going they know they know how to wash hands by meena so i think from the very childhood and when i was young i was i was in class 1 that is my age is 6 or 7 years i i, I also uh, see the meena meena cartoon so that that is that is the most uh, i think this is the thing unicef and bangladesh government jointly together with the awareness building and uh, but but yes still now it's a challenge because you know about the municipal authority the mayors they want votes no so so they don't want to pressure like that way but even now we are improving our containment system and now the bangladesh government is uh, fo uh, focusing mostly about the line containment light pit system because otherwise you will not cover the sanitation value chain if your containment system the starting uh, part is not uh, 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 well covered then the overall sanitation value chain it's a dream to achieve up to the use so that's why thank you i think i think i will i i i can i can cover your question yeah uh, definitely uh, thank you ma'am as you had said like making people aware and making them more aware would lead to much of less pollution so that puts you to the next question to shishir kumar sir is like generally when we talk about sanitation or even the wash sector it is often looked at it as a problem of surface water or like sewage treatment plant or building effluent treatment plant or discharge from industries so what do you need what do you think should be the government level government level policies and community level 
uh, engagement that should happen to make people also understand groundwater is also one kind of a resource which is getting polluted and the pollution is having much higher impact than what is happening in the surface water. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, yes, uh, uh, just like today's topic. Uh, actually, uh, groundwater is closely related to the, our uh, exercise of the sanitation system in Bangladesh. You know that uh, that's why I have mentioned that uh, absolutely we should not contaminate uh, our groundwater resources. Different acts, different rule, uh, regulations, and also policy strategies are there. But uh, you know that. Uh, those are written, but if we uh, cannot reach to the uh, this implementer uh, that what to do, then uh, the written things uh, will be in written. <laughs> so that's why DPHE, with collaboration of the uh, local government institutions, tremendous sensitization programs are going on with uh, mayors of the municipalities and other officials, also the the. Uh, policy makers and uh, elected persons from the union level, the councillors, something like this. And now we realized it a lot that our existing containment system are not good. This, uh, if you consider this coverage of the existing containment system, that's why in the upcoming projects, we are concentrating those a lot and we are uh, giving specific order from the local government division to those municipalities and the city corporations to upgrade those containment systems so that not a single drop of the contaminant exposed to the environment. Uh, so yes, uh, it has been started and gradually the containment system uh, is improving and uh, our uh, just uh, implementing agencies and enforcement who are giving there is an enforcement and the uh, mayors of the, municipality, the municipalities uh, are uh, trying their best, started their initiatives uh, though you know that it's a really, really challenging, so many people uh, have uh, developed their structures without uh, these types of things. Now, gradually, they are breaking uh, some portion of this, their buildings and uh, install this containment system. And some municipalities are very, very easy to cut their some types of uh, uh, utility services if they uh, just uh, uh, drain out their, uh, I mean, that they're from their containment system, like uh, holding tank or so. These types of things are jointly uh, organizing and uh, initiating in different regions of uh, Bangladesh. So hopefully, and another very important issues is that uh, for uh, how many um, water points are getting contamination from this uh, fecal waste or bacteriologically contaminated randomly, we are uh, uh, we are implementing this water safety plan. And you know that we have the zonal laboratory and randomly uh, we are uh, collecting the water samples uh, from different regions, some uh, rural areas and uh, uh, throw it to our laboratories, also ICDDRB, also some other engineering uh, institutes, uh, their laboratory, uh, you can say the one to 3% random check. So based on that, we can uh, check the, the how this, uh, uh, I mean, the containment system actually deteriorating this, uh, our groundwater sources. So uh, these are uh, actually we are initiating, but uh, yes, absolutely long way to go. Some uh, different types of things we need to be initiated, but with the help of, of all, just like a teamwork, we will be able to achieve our ultimate target. Thank you, Varad. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. As you really said, like, uh, with, without proper implementation, with just the rules, like nothing would change. We need to implement properly and check check wherever the uh, uh, contamination or all these things are happening. So yeah, so I, I also like believe like uh, to working together, India, Bangladesh, we would be able to achieve SDG seven of clean water and sanitation as water is closely linked to sanitation. Since water is like as you call the elixir of life. So even if if sanitation is not covered and just looking at sources of water, then there's no point in bringing on conserving water. So I would like to uh, hand it over to Fauzi Amem. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Bharat, I think for highlighting uh, that. And as you as you rightly said that, uh, you know, India, India, perhaps we have had a very big mission from 2014 to 2019. I think we went on for uh, Swachh Bharat mission. Uh, the whole whole mission was focused on building toilets, but at the same time, you know, 
rightly highlighted the functionality of these toilets. Huh? Are these toilets really functional? How many people are using that? Sometimes, you know, we invest in communal toilets. And then if communal toilets are made, then who has the ownership of maintaining these communal toilets? What is the accountability, you know, with regard to even the, or we, we have something called like polluter space principle, but something which is invisible completely. How do we really make people accountable for that, that you are polluting? Who monitors it on a day-to-day -day basis? What happens to those old toilets, you know, which weren't lined, like, for instance, Sharmishta was talking about, you know, uh, about the lining uh, of it. But then what about those systems which were not lined? How many of them can be destroyed and rebuilt? What is the level of pollution, uh, you know, at the ground level, at, in the groundwater that is being through these, these uh, CPJs and beaches that's reaching the groundwater? So, so many questions, you know, when, when the quality is compromised, when the contractors who are assigned to do these, these tasks, you know, uh, they they are not held up accountable. Sometimes I would also say, I know I have a due respect to two engineers from Bangladesh, but sometimes even engineers, you know, they are not held accountable for these things. So there is, you know, it's it's more of, uh, as we, we studied, you know, in the gender class, most of these are stopped at the, at the output level indicator. So how many toilets built? And then what has been the output of it, as in how many of them are functional? And what has been the impact of it as in how much, you know, it really helped people. So those things are uh, a lot ignored in, in our uh, whole decision-making process. Or as I think Shishirji pointed out about uh, the policies, you know, in Britain, we have a lot of policies. If at all those policies were enforced uh, sincerely, then perhaps we would have been much better many years ago. So great, I think, lovely conversation going on. I see Sharmisha raising her hand, so Sharmisha, over to you and then we take questions from the audience. Huh? Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Madam. Uh, I just wanted to highlight uh, one thing uh, uh, through Mr. Shishir. I think Mr. Shishir was, uh, he was uh, in the charge of arsenic management division in DPHE from 2015 to maybe 2018. So, uh, and he did a lot about the arsenic uh, technology, which is not run by electricity. Maybe there is a question or some comments in the chat box. Can you, you made lots of purifiers uh, and also you have a data log maybe for arsenic. So um, for 33 district towns. So I think uh, it is very uh, important. Please share your experience about the uh, arsenic removal yeah. technology, what you have done in arsenic management division. I think it is important. Thank you, Sharmishra. I think that's that's an important thing that you raised out, and you know this question has been raised by Mr. Chandrasekharan, who is uh, who who has been doing a lot of good work uh, with regard to uh, making filter filtration system. So, uh, uh, of course, later we can definitely connect you with him. He he works in India, but uh, maybe at as of now, if uh, Shishirda could re reflect a little bit on this, Shishirji, over to you. Yeah, thank you very much. I don't know how long we have the time. Uh, yes, uh, the, that's 12 years and uh, from 2018 uh, in this work sector, huge works uh, with uh, different academia, different research group. Uh, yes, uh, from uh, 2015 to 2018, I was in arsenic management division. Uh, we have uh, prepared the groundwater uh, uh, level or in changes of groundwater uh, in the, uh, I mean, southern portion and northern portion in dry season and uh, in uh, wet season. And uh, along with the aquifer system, what I have actually presented, uh, the shallow aquifer zone and uh, the modeling of the uh, deeper aquifer zone. And uh, where in, uh, you know, that leak, our aquifer system are quite leaky aquifer. We have the uh, near about uh, three to four uh, aquifer system. And in between the aquifer, there are aquitured systems. So when we get the uh, aquifer system in the upper layer, let's say aquifer number two, we are getting the uh, heavy metals like uh, some, uh, sometimes the uh, manganese or uh, arsenic, even iron of concentration near about eight to 14, near about. So we have collected those information, uh, prepared uh, the aquifer modeling and uh, uh, yes, prepared a uh, mega book uh, and uh, preserved in our uh, our DPHE it's a re as a resource. That's why the other information I have uh, provided you, the technology mapping. So now we are uh, 
we know that in which area, which technology uh, are viable and which aquifer layer are the viable. Apart from this, in, uh, there is, are several areas where the shallow and ground deeper zone uh, have quite same the arsenic concentration near about 80 ppb or 120 ppb near about. So in that case, uh, absolutely in the rural piped water scheme, we are developing just uh, purifying the water and giving it to the uh, the rural uh, or villagers, rural people or the villagers uh, after treatment, it is the tapped water. Uh, and uh, where there's a really minimum, just like the 60 ppb or more than just like uh, 55 ppb, so uh, there are some provision of uh, that household uh, treatment unit, very, very simple treatment unit. And uh, you know that uh, we have our own technology, uh, very easy to uh, prepare by our household uh, through different types of campaigns. We are uh, providing those. And uh, though Bangladesh is a very, very small country, but you know that geologically it is so different in uh, Southern region, the coastal region, the hilly regions, the, in every region, the uh, groundwater aquifer system is uh, so different. So uh, we have so many challenges, but that's why uh, many research, uh, we are uh, inviting many researchers uh, here to prepare the optimum uh, solution and different technologies. Uh, Japan, also India, different professors, uh, and of uh, different academias of different countries come here of, uh, with their own solutions, some patents also. So uh, we are trying with different solutions. Yeah, so, thank but, you. Uh, <laughs> thank you, uh, Shishirji. I think I will separately connect you with Mr. Chandrasekharan because Mr. Chandrasekharan from Watson is doing some good work in India as well with regard to filtration system, very low cost filtration system, uh, which perhaps, you know, uh, even for treating arsenic. So maybe I can separately connect both of you through email and you could take this uh, discussion forward. Uh, really you know, pleasure. In case. Hi, Ajit, sir. Uh, thank you so much for joining. Uh, thanks uh, as just, always. Uh, just a small observation. Uh, see, yes. uh, in India, uh, we had been having this uh, in Swachh Bharat mission, uh, open dedication free. And uh, this we started much before uh, water harvesting and other things. That is the first thing to be done, open dedication free to, to, to be ensured. But it so ha happened that in many areas, in rural areas, we are ha not having water, we are not having power, we are not having privacy. And we are not having the facility to have uh, toilets built up. So in certain areas, uh, what uh, Gram, uh, Gram Punch and others have done is, they have done open defecation in a controlled way. That means they will use one area, men, women, and others, uh, three sets. They will use one area for one month and they will leave it for next month uh, they will change over to the another area, similar area, and the earlier area will be cleaned up and uh, all that fickle, the fickle matter and all these things would be cleaned up and it will be composted and used for agri farms. So this is this uh, type of arrangement uh, has been tried out in many uh, disaster areas also. It is, it is actually called as controlled open defecation where we are not able to build toilets and problem of power, problem of water and other things are there. So this can be done uh, as a um, pure measure to ensure that we are, we are having open defecation free. Uh, this is just, yeah. just a, just a mention. So yeah, thanks, Ajit thanks, sir, thanks. thanks a lot. I think on the same note, uh, this question is uh, there in the chat box from uh, Mr. Rajesh. Uh, to Shishirji. Shishirji, uh, and I think uh, what Ajit sir has also said, maybe a connection to that you could draw as well, uh, where he asks that for constructing septic tanks, is topsoil and subsurface soils play an important role? And, uh, you know, when you're constructing a septic tank, do you look at the soil? You know, I, I saw you showed a board log, but I am assuming that board log was more for the drinking water supply that you showed. But do you really look at the, you know, uh, the lithology that is there? And also, you know, if we are recommending anything like a controlled open defecation, how important that becomes, you know, to prevent uh, the, the, uh, the contamination to leach into the groundwater? Over to you. 
Uh, no, actually, uh, what uh, has been mentioned here, the uh, controlled open defecation. Uh, first of all, uh, we have the toilets in almost 100%, different types of toilets. We have the containment system, any types. The problem is, since we have uh, the very limited number, very, very limited number of the treatment and dislodging system, mechanical dislodging system, because of the lack of the service, uh, the peoples, uh, most of the in basically in uh, peri-urban and urban uh, regions, where uh, there is the less space of uh, uh, building, uh, the septic tank, uh, they are uh, discharging their, uh, I mean, wet portion of the, uh, that uh, water to the drain or uh, near about channels. So we have identified it uh, very clearly. That's why gradually we are trying our best to, uh, you know, that so many uh, technologies, the ABR, the uh, anaerobic baffle reactor, and some others, just like I have mentioned, the biofill toilets. So different types of things, twin pit toilet systems. Uh, so uh, we have that. But now we are in a position to establish different types of, uh, uh, I mean, containment system, uh, very, very, uh, standardized system and uh, uh, emptying system, mechanical, uh, standardized, and uh, provide very minimum scale, at least minimum scale of decentralized treatment plant so that uh, this discharge of the water to the water body will uh, be limited at the time and improve, will improve uh, the overall environment at a lot. Yeah, thank you very much. I think Mansi had raised her hand. Mansi, over to you. Mansi has been visiting Bangladesh and collaborating with, you know, uh, some doing some training program for you know, grassroots level ladies as uh, well. And she is uh, uh, one of the prime movers for the Wednesdays for Water. So I would now like to invite her for her thoughts and question. Thank you, Fazia, and thank you, Shishir and Sarmishta, for such a wonderful uh, presentation and telling us more about what's going under the ground in Bangladesh, which is very tricky there, with water being so up <laughs> and we are going down. And good to see our student Bharat uh, being very prompt and active in asking questions. Uh, my question to uh, you, Shishida, uh, is uh, basically when we have put these toilets in place, when we and I, I really realize that women are quite active and um, aware about what's going on in, in terms of both water groundwater contamination, and also in terms of uh, cleanliness. So I felt that as per my experience of women in the rural and many um, uh, low income group in India, Bangladesh women were much more aware of even what kind of schemes going on, you know, what kind of facilities they can aware, they are aware about their rights and all. So if, uh, I, I'm, I'm just trying to be optimistic, but I still want to know your cross finger situation. How do you see from here when you say that you have already achieved 97% of uh, your target uh, 10 years, 15 years from now, because all these projects are based on operation and maintenance. We have been very good in South Asia in implementing projects. How to run it? Because you have put the sandboard system, which is also very active. And I really saw women knowing about these things. And that was quite enlightening for me. Huh? How do you really foresee that people will be really able to use this real-time data and informing the local authorities of any kind of problems? Because these will be all based on maintenance of it in the long run. Over to you. What is your game plan for it so that we can learn here? Uh, yes, thank you very much. Uh, you know that uh, every uh, single development needs budget investment. And uh, government, any government in any of the part of the world, cannot provide 100% service to every people. Absolutely. So for an example, if we install one hand tube oil, in private sector, 10 hand tube oil actually installs. So if we uh, just uh, provide the campaign, the standards, the water safety plan, if we ensure those hand tube oils are uh, standard and uh, maintain the all types of facilities, so then the real uh, improvement will be happened. And regarding this, uh, uh, I mean, what you have mentioned was, yes, the containment and the discharge of this contaminant to the, uh, to the groundwater. Similarly, uh, we are simultaneously uh, providing the development project, sensitizing the 
peoples of a local government institution at the same time you know that our women in bangladesh is very very active our yeah. blue chiefs the main uh, actually uh, you can say the uh, exported group is our garment sector and uh, our more than 90% are dominated by our women and they are educated they know their uh, basic health service system and what are the must uh, facilities needed in their home so gradually their income is increasing and you know in our rural level the what they are actually establishing just like their home their house so fantastic so really changing in in dashboard if we uh, just lock the graph of the development activities in the home or the septic tank let's say the septic tank or containment development in the last 3 to 4 years the curve is a exponentially increase so this is quite common here because when the income level of the people uh, increase and uh, they are aware of it absolutely if government provide 1 dollar the another 10 dollar will come in the investment so that is our actual phenomena to improve the overall scenario in bangladesh thank you yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, Mansi, I would like to now conclude uh, in, uh, in the interest of time, you know, it's, it's going to be 1.35. But thank you very much and very well put. I think we would like to applaud the Bangladesh government for adopting a multi-stakeholder approach. And with what Mansi also just shared, I think it got validated also that you are trying to to sort of engage with the community and the community is aware about it. And that's really phenomenal uh, that is there. Uh, and uh, we really wish you all the best. And we, we would like to thank all the speakers, uh, Mr. Shishir, uh, Sharmishta and Bharat for joining us today. Uh, we have our next session that is Friday Waters. And in the Friday Waters at the same time at 12.30, sorry, at 5 p.m. Uh, India time and 5.30 p.m. Bangladesh time. And today, since we have joined from Netherlands, that's why I said 12.30 uh, p.m. Netherlands time, you know, we, we would again be having a session on performing arts for cultural change. And then followed by for the next Wednesday, we are having a session on uh, on uh, the lakes and uh, lake rejuvenation and pond rejuvenation series. So do do uh, we have a presence on the Facebook and uh, Instagram and uh, Twitter and LinkedIn and all the links are provided in the chat box. Do follow us. And whenever you have time, please do join us. See me. It's such a pleasure to see you. You know, we have people across geography. I miss telling the Pakistan time. Yeah, but yeah, even even you joining from there, it's always a pleasure to see you. Uh, great. Thank you very much. Thank you, participants, for joining us today. We look forward to strengthening our Wednesdays for Water series and other activities of W for W Foundation, which most of us are doing it voluntarily, but in the greater cause of protecting our water resources. Thank you very much. Thanks, my team member from the W for W Foundation.